Hi, I'm Wynn, cycling instructor, and today I'm going to show you how to make an ultralight cycle camping stove. Before we get started, let's go over some of the things that needs to be able to do. The stove needs to be able to work when the surface is wet and cold. That's number one. Uh, it needs to work when it's windy. It needs to be stable when you put a pot or a frying pan on it, it's not going to be liable to fall off. It needs to have a minimum number of parts so you don't need to carry a separate stand that's kind of might add more weight or break it needs to be high reliability it needs to be able to burn a wide range of fuels alcohol gasoline diesel kerosene you know uh, fingernail polish remover anything that's flammable that you can cook with um, in this case because of covid Hand sanitizer is widely available, it's pure alcohol, and it's inexpensive. Okay, it needs to be easy to make and it uses the least amount of parts. So let me set up my work table and I'll show you how to make one. The stove uses an aluminum cat can, cat food can. And when you first get it, there's a ridge around the top where the pop top comes off and you need to remove that. I have a very thick glass bottle here and what I'll do is I'll just run this around on a piece of wood to remove that ridge. All right, and a sturdy table with a, on a cutting board with a cutting board on top of it will work really well and that's pretty good the next step is I've got a piece of paper here this is graph paper and I cut it so that there are maybe four lines across it and I'll just set up here a piece of tape and I'll run this around so that it's fairly uniform so it starts at the same place that it ended. Okay, and we're gonna punch some holes in it. This has two rows of holes. You don't want to have holes that are too close together, but uh, you also want to have a fair number. The graph paper works well because uh, it makes it nice and uniform. So to cut punch the holes, use a hole puncher. And to keep the parts from flying around, you just use a waste paper container and then you start punching. It's, it's kind of tough to do, but just line it up and you work your way around. So in this case, I'll have one hole and then one, two spaces, and I'll line it up so that uh, where the hole punch touches the lines, that's where it'll, it'll go. So I've completed the first row and there are three lines between each hole and I push the, the hole punch as far in as it can go, right? So now these, the first row is complete and the next row I'll, I'll stagger it in between and uh, work from there. So let me punch the next hole which will be roughly in between, it doesn't have to be perfect, but having a a guide helps so we'll put it here all right and so they're slightly offset they don't have to be perfect these are all the holes and you can see that they're offset and that's sufficient that's good enough the next step is we have another cat food can this is a small one and when nested inside each other they're the same elevation this is where the fuel will go, and so we'll add a few holes here. Now this is what limits the burn time for your stove. So more holes, the stove will burn hotter, but less time for the same amount of fuel. Smaller holes and fewer of them, the stove will burn cooler, but a lot longer. You know, so what I found is putting four holes in this will probably work. All right, so here I've got uh, the graph paper wrapped around it. I put an X down on it 
and followed, followed the lines up and put a little check mark by this so that they're roughly 90 degrees. I think four holes will work fine for this. So let me set up my trash container. I have the trash container here so that it'll catch the, the metal punches. So if I want to add more holes, I certainly can. All right, so here's four. Let's say just in case I want to add a couple of more. So then I'll come around here. I ball roughly in between that. So let's put in eight holes here. And Now you don't want these two holes too far down because uh, this is where your fuel is going to set. So of course, so if it's too low, then you're not going to have a good burn time. But you're going to use about two tablespoons of fuel on this. So this is done. So the next step is we want this to set inside. We want it to be one piece. And so with some sandpaper, I'm going to remove the outer coating on the bottom center of this small cap food can so that adhesive will be able to stick to it, okay? And we'll do the same on the inside of this. Okay, so that part is done. I have a small amount of charcoal here that I ground up. And we're going to make a small batch of epoxy because I'm almost out of it. You only need a couple of drops. And if this doesn't work, then you can glue it a second time. Okay. So mix equal parts together. Add the charcoal to it because epoxy itself is not very strong, so it needs to be mixed with something that will act as a filler. All right, so you can see this is just a couple of drops. And we're gonna put these two together, try to center it up a little bit. And then I'll get a clamp and we'll clamp it. So here's my clamp. And because there's a dimple inside the bottom of a small cat food can, so it needs to make good contact. So we'll just move this around, center it up again. There we go. We'll tighten it up and We'll just leave it there and let the and let the adhesive set. So let's remove the clamp from this. It feels pretty good. This is fairly well centered and looks like it has good adhesion. The next step is we'll put some feet on this. And so this is a wine cork that I cut up using my miter box. But you can easily do this on a cutting board with a kitchen knife. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some, some feet on this. Okay. And so we'll just arrange this so that there might be perhaps, you know, maybe four, four of these. There's a ridge here, but you'll just have to make do with that. And so you can use epoxy again. I have contact cement. And so, with contact cement, it of course needs to uh, dry first. So I'll, I'll glue these four together. And I tried to make them all the same height, but uh, just do the best you can. We'll level it out later. And then I'll 
put some glue here. I think that's pretty good. So we'll let this dry for a few more minutes and then I'll come back and we'll put the feet on. <laughs> okay, it's been about 20 minutes and in the hot sun. So let's put on the feet. And then we'll put a brick on top of it. Let that sit for a little while and I'll come back. So the feet are fairly well glued on and the heights are all a little different. To level this we can put down some sandpaper and rub it back and forth. An easier method is just scrape this on sidewalk to get it level. All right. So I'll just rub this back and forth and rotate it a little bit. And you can see that uh, we're getting a fair amount of wear here. Let's try a rougher spot on the cement. There we go. That's pretty stable. The reason why you have the feet is so that if the surface is wet on the table, the, still, the stove will still function because the way a stove like this works is that the fluid needs to vaporize. And so if it's cool in, a, in standing water, of course, this is not going to vaporize. Okay, so now the stove is complete. What we need is a, she a, a shield to put beneath the stove because the flames will come out to the side and you don't want to burn the table that you're on. So these are mostly reflectors. This is, happens to be the top of a can um, with a mylar backing coming from Costco peanuts. And the center part, if you pull off the tab, well that's this, all right? And this is pretty good as a reflector. You can use a sheet of aluminum, aluminum also. Uh, and it's mylar, but since most of it is the heat is going to be reflected upwards, this mylar is not going to melt. The next step thing you need also is if you have a pot, frying pan, uh, you need to make it wind resistant. And to, you, to do that, uh, use a, a strip of aluminum. All right. To make it to make a, the windscreen, look for a, a chafing dish. And you don't need to buy one. Just go to a park where there's some kid is having a birthday party or somebody's having a party and when they're done. If they have food, there's a good chance a chafing dish will be stuffed in a garbage can. The trash can there, just fish it out, wash it out. Cut a strip about uh, six inches wide from edge to edge and use a a glass cup or a plastic tumbler and roll it out flat and then you can wrap it around your pot. Okay. If there is not one that's long enough you can use multiple pieces and staple it together. That works as well. So in the next video I'll fire up the stove and we'll start cooking things. <laughs>